Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord, he's good, his mercies are everlasting, and his truth endureth for generation to generation. So enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercies are everlasting, and his truth endureth for generation to generation. That's a little tune that doesn't have an ending. It's like a round. You just have to grab an ending. Good morning to each and every one of you on this March 13. March 13. Wow, we are marching through March, aren't we? <clears throat> and today we will return to the wonderful book of Bamadbar, Numbers chapter 19, verse 1. Numbers 19, verse 1. And we're going to hear about the ashes of the red heifer today and learn what the Lord had to say about all of that, okay? Numbers 19, 1. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, this is the ordinance of the law, which the Lord has commanded, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they bring you a red heifer without blemish, in which there is no defect and on which a yoke has never come. You shall give it to Eleazar the priest, <clears throat> that he may take it outside the camp, and it shall be slaughtered before them, and Eleazar the priest shall take some of its blood with his finger and sprinkle some of its blood seven times, seven times, directly in front of the tabernacle of meeting, and then the heifer shall be burned in his sight, its hide, its flesh, its blood, and its offal shall be burned. And the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast them into the midst of the fire burning the heifer. And then the priest shall wash his clothes. He shall bathe in water. And afterward, he shall come into the camp. The priest shall be unclean until evening. And the one who burns it shall wash his clothes in water, bathe in water, and shall be unclean until evening. And then a man who is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer and store them outside the camp in a clean place, and they shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel for the water of purification." It is the purifying from sin. And the one who gathers the asher of the heifer shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening. It shall be a statute forever to the children of Israel and to the stranger who dwells among them. And in Israel, they are preparing for this once again. And they have worked a long time to perfect the lineage of a heifer that would be perfect. Every hair will be examined. And I understand they have one. Now we'll see what all happens. Don't bank on me, because you know you read this thing and then you read something else. He who touches the dead body of anyone shall be unclean seven days. He shall purify himself with the water on the third day 
and on the seventh day, and then he will be clean. But if he does not purify himself on the third day and on the seventh day, he will not be clean. Whoever touches the body of anyone who has died and does not purify himself defiles the temple of the Lord. That person shall be cut off from Israel. He shall be unclean because the water of purification was not sprinkled on him. His uncleanness is still on him. And we will move along. Good morning, Miss Sharon and Cindy and others who are who are coming on, tuning in. And uh, I will say again, we are reading in Numbers chapter 19, Bamadbar, and we are going to start verse 14 now. Verse 14, Numbers 19, 14. This is the law when a man dies in a tent. All who come into the tent and all who are in the tent shall be unclean seven days. And every open vessel which has no cover fastened on it is unclean. Whoever in the open field touches one who is slain by a sword or who has died or a bone of a man or a grave shall be unclean seven days. And for any unclean person, they shall take some of the ashes of the heifer, burnt for purification from sin, and running water shall be put on them in a vessel. A clean person shall take hyssop and dip it in the water, sprinkle it on the tent, on all the vessels, on the persons who were there, or on the one who touches a bone, the slain, the dead, or a grave. The clean person shall sprinkle the unclean on the third day and on the seventh day, <clears throat> and on the seventh day he shall purify himself, wash his clothes, and bathe in water. And at evening, at evening, he shall be clean. But the man who is unclean and does not purify himself, that person shall be cut off from among the assembly because he has defiled the sanctuary of the Lord. How about that? Tying the sanctuary into whether you obeyed to clean yourself or not. Wow. The water of purification has not been sprinkled on him. He is unclean. It shall be a perpetual statute for them. He who sprinkles the water of purification shall wash his clothes, and he who touches the water of purification shall be unclean until the evening. Whatever the unclean person touches shall be unclean, and the person who touches it shall be unclean until evening. Good morning, Miss Kim. And we move right along to chapter 20 of Numbers. Chapter 20 of Bamidbar Numbers. And then the children of Israel, these are my words, they bring more complaints, okay? This is not pleasing the Lord, let me tell you. Then the children of Israel, the whole congregation, came into the wilderness of Tzin in the first month, and the people stayed at Kadesh, and Miriam died there. Miriam died there and was buried there. Now there was no water for the congregation, so they gathered together against Moshe and Aaron, and the people contended with Moshe, Moses and spoke, saying, If only we had died when our brethren died before the Lord, why have you brought up the assembly of the Lord into this wilderness, that we and our animals should die here? 
And why have you made us come up out of Egypt to bring us to this evil place? They're forgetting how much they hated Egypt, aren't they? It is not a place of grain or figs or vines or pomegranates, nor is there any water to drink. So Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly to the door of the tabernacle of meeting, and they fell on their faces. And the glory, the glory of the Lord appeared to them. And then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the rod. You and your brother Aaron gather the congregation together. Speak to the rock before their eyes, and it will yield its water. Thus you shall bring water for them out of the rock and give drink to the congregation and their animals. So we're talking about an enormous amount of water. So Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock. And he said to them, Hear now, you rebels. And here's a big mistake in what he said. And they're going to pay a heavy price. Must we bring water for you? We? Notice one word is going to cost them a big price. Must we bring water for you out of this rock? And then Moses lifted his hand and he struck the rock twice with his rod. And water came out abundantly. And the congregation and their animals drank. That enormous crowd of people and animals. And then the Lord spoke to Moshe and Aaron, because you did not believe me to hallow me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. Wow. Wow, y'all. Imagine that. This was the water of Meribah, because the children of Israel contended with the Lord, and he was hallowed among them. Now Moses sent messengers from Kadesh to the king of Edom. Thus says your brother Israel, you know all the hardship that has befallen us, how our fathers went down to Egypt and we dwelled in Egypt a long time. And the Egyptians afflicted us and our fathers. And when we cried out to the Lord, he heard our voice and sent the angel and brought us up out of Egypt. Now, here we are in Kadesh, a city on the edge of your border. Please let us pass through your country. We will not pass through fields or vineyards, nor will we drink water from wells. We will go along the king's highway. We will not turn aside to the right hand or to the left until we have passed through your territory. And then Edom said to him, You shall not pass through my land, lest I come out against you with the sword so the children of Israel said to him, We will go by the highway. And if I or my livestock drink any of your water, then I will pay for it. Let me only pass through on foot, nothing more. And this would have been the shorter route. And then he said, You shall not pass through. So Edom came out against them with many men, and with a strong hand. Thus Edom refused to give Israel passage through his territory. So Israel turned away from him. 
Now the children of Israel, the whole congregation, journeyed from Kadesh and came to Mount Hor. And the Lord spoke to Moshe and Aaron in Mount Hor by the border of the land of Edom, saying, Aaron shall be gathered to his people, for he shall not enter the land which I have given to the children of Israel, because you rebelled against my word at the water of Meribah. Take Aaron and Eleazar his son, and bring them up to Mount Hor, and strip Aaron of his garments, and put them on Eleazar his son. For Aaron shall be gathered to his people, and die there. Imagine that. Just imagine that. Aaron knew that as they climbed up the mountain, that he was to die there. So Moshe did just as the Lord commanded, and they went up to Mount Hor in the sight of all the congregation, and Moses stripped Aaron of his garments and put them on Eleazar, his son. And Aaron died there on the top of the mountain, and then Moses and Eleazar came down from the mountain. Now when all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead, all the house of Israel mourned for Aaron 30 days. 30 days. Wow. Y'all, it does not pay. It does not pay to rebel against the Lord. We are learning this word of his, and we need obedience, don't we? All right, let's walk along now. And we are beginning Luke. We have finished up Mark, and we are beginning Luke, chapter 1, verse 1. If you'd like to turn there in your Bible, I'll give you a second while I grab a little sip here. My wonderful son-in-law went out and got this coffee. Woo! So appreciative. Luke 1.1 1, 1. Inasmuch as many have taken in hand to set in order a narrative of those things which have been fulfilled among us, just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word delivered them to us. It seemed good to me, Luke says, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write to you an orderly account, most excellent Theophilus, that you may know the certainty of those things in which you were instructed. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. How about that? So you see, it can be done. It can be done to be blameless. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren and they were both well advanced in years. So it was that while he was serving as priest before God in the order of his division, according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people was praying outside at the hour of incense. And then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, 
Do not be afraid, Zacharias, or Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And that's a quote from Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6, which was quoted at the end of the Old Covenant, the Old Testament. And now look at here. It's being fulfilled. And Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I'm an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. Wow. I mean, look what we're reading. Another very severe punishment for disobedience, for not believing and the poor waited for Zacharias, and they marveled that he lingered so long in the temple. But when he came out, he could not speak to them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned to them, and he remained speechless. So it was as soon as the days of his service were completed, that he departed to his own house. Now after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she hid herself five months, saying, Thus the Lord has dealt with me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among people. Wow! A miracle from the Lord. And we leave off the New Testament there with the beginning of the reading of Luke, and we move along to Psalm 56. Psalm 56. And here again are words given to the chief musician, and it says here that they set it to a tune that they had entitled the silent dove in distant lands. And it's a michtam of David when the Philistines captured him in Gath. Captured him. So these are David's words. Be merciful to me, O God, for man would swallow me up. Fighting all day he oppresses me. My enemies would hound me all day, for there are many who fight against me, O Most High. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you, in God. I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? All day they twist my words, all their thoughts, are against me for evil. They gather together. They hide. They mark my steps. When they lie in wait for my life, 
Shall they escape by iniquity? In anger, cast down the people, O God. And we move along here to a very beautiful, beautiful, anointed word from David. You number my wanderings. Put my tears into your bottle. Are they not in your book? When I cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. This I know, because God is for me. In God, I will praise his word. In the Lord, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Isn't that beautiful? Man can kill him. We all know that. But he is reducing it down to no concern. What can man do to me? Vows made to you are binding upon me, O God. I will render praises to you, for you have delivered my soul from death. Have you not kept my feet from falling? That I may walk before God in the light of the living? And to that we say yes, a resounding yes. He has kept David's feet from falling. And we can apply all those words to our own life, can't we? And we can encourage ourselves in the word of God. That's the purpose of being here, to be faithful, to be faithful to the word of God. All right, we will close up today's reading except you don't have to do that. You can keep right on going, please. I encourage you to be inspired and keep on going. And we will wrap it up with Proverbs chapter 11, verse 8. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 11, verse 8. So this is short and very sweet. The righteous is delivered from trouble. And it comes to the wicked instead. Woo! Don't we have examples of that before our eyes in this day and age? The righteous is delivered from trouble. And it comes to the wicked instead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then we need to pray for the wicked, don't we? that somehow all the events in their life would be used to turn them around and to come to the Lord Jesus while there's time. While there's time, we don't know. We have the dawn of a new day today, but we don't know what the rest of the day will bring, do we? But we will trust him. We will grab a hold of David's words. And we will say to ourselves and to the Lord, we will trust you. We will trust you. Let's end with prayer. Father God, how we bless you today, Lord, for your word. Your word is truth. Your word is really the only thing that we can depend on, that we can know will not change. Events in the world will change according to what your word says. And so, Father God, we bless you. We thank you that we are so blessed by you to have your word, your word in our hands. We don't know there could come a day when we don't have it, but we will have it where no man can take it. We will have it in our minds, in our memory, in our hearts, in our soul, in our spirit. And we will walk after you, Lord. We will obey you as best we know how. We hold up Israel, Lord. We hold up your precious country, your precious land. And you are bringing your people home just like you said you would. And we are witnesses to that today. Oh, what a privilege. 
What a privilege, Lord, to hear about it, see about it, pictures. You are giving them great new inventions. You are blessing them. They are growing crops like there's nowhere else on the, on the earth. Beautiful, beautiful, healthy crops. You have showed them how to till and how to keep the soil in a beautiful way. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless you for what we're seeing today. We thank you. Bring more home today, please, Lord. Let more come home. Let monies be released that they could get on planes, that they could come. Hallelujah. Lord, we hold up Ukraine. And we hold up, Lord, that um, the evil people try to create a situation to draw your attention to it. And what we should be looking at is what they're doing while we're our attention's over here. They are working evil over here. So precious Lord, we praise your name that we can pray and we can pray in the spirit. And the spirit within us, the Holy Spirit, the one Holy Spirit. Rakakodesh will pray for exactly what you want prayed for. Holy Ghost will guide us. Holy Ghost will take the prayer language you give those baptized in the Holy Spirit and will direct you to bring out words that cover what the Lord wants covered. Thank you for that, Lord. It's a miracle. It's an absolute miracle, and we bless you for it, Lord. We give you praise. We worship you for it. We thank you that we have come to you. We've repented. We've accepted you, and now we are privileged to be called sons and daughters of the Most High King. Thank you for that, Lord. Bring many Bring many of your chosen people. Bring them to you. Bring them home out of very dangerous places where they have been despised rather than loved. Bring them home, Lord, please. And Father God, we ask you be with the Knesset, the ruling body. We ask, Lord, that those that you have allowed to be in that ruling body, that they would do what you want them to do. What you want them to do. And Lord, I say a special prayer for Bibi Netanyahu and his family. Lord, that man is special in my heart. And I lift him up to you. And I know in my heart that you are not finished with using his life in a glorious way. So Father God, put angels all around the Netanyahu's and protect them and cause him, cause Bibi, Lord, to hear you, to listen to you. Father God, I hold up America to you in this very troubled time. And precious God, you are revealing to us, you are making it very plain what is evil and what is righteous. There's no confusion anymore. It's bold as brass in our day and age. So, Father, I'd ask that by your spirit, you would awaken the people, that you would take away the spirit, of des deceiving spirit that has tried to swallow up America and cause us to be very foolish, cause us to just believe anything that's out there. Precious God, Help us to listen to your spirit within us and to not swallow up anything that's thrown out there by the lying press. Father God, we'd ask that you would work with all of those in that media and that you would change 
many hearts, that you would bring many to you, that we would once again have people of truth, people of truth in our media. Lord, I'd ask that you'd take out the evil people who are in positions of authority in America, and they don't belong there. They never won, but there was a whole lot of evil went on. Lord Jesus, it's like you're giving America a spanking that she needed, whatever we want to describe. Lord, we humble ourselves before you. I humble myself before you today. And Lord, as best I know how, I want to follow you. I want to seek you, seek your word. Help, Lord, all of these believers to seek you harder, longer, deeper, with more sincerity than ever before. And Lord, those who don't know you yet, bring them to you. Please, Lord, take all the circumstances of their life and cause all of that to lead them to you. And we pray, Lord, for many. We have many on our hearts that each one is lifting up before you. Friends, relatives, people we don't even know, but you have put them on our heart. We lift them up to you, Lord. And we say, Holy Spirit, please enter into the circumstances of their life and draw them that they would have their salvation, the most precious gift, their salvation in you. They would come to you, Lord, and not go to hell. So, Father God, take out evil ones who are in positions of power and put in righteous and cause the body of Christ to rise up, to rise up and to be the leading voice for your word. And we thank you for it in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And all God's people cried an amen to what they agreed with and go right on, y'all, worshiping the Lord on this beautiful day he's given us. Bye-bye.